G'day everyone, and today on Nolsey's Outdoors, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be performing a minor service on my 90 series Toyota Prado. So that means what we're going to do is we're basically just going to change the air filter, the oil filter, and we're going to inspect all of our other uh, inspectables. So the first thing you want to do when doing a basic service is check your oil and coolant. When checking the oil, you want to look for a darker colour, which indicates age. The darker the oil, the older it is. As for coolant, check your owner's manual, and if it doesn't match or there is too little, it's time to drain and refill. See that, but yeah, looks like it could definitely use a change. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the Brown Davis bash plate from the underside of the car. As I've pulled it out, I've noticed a small amount of oil near the access hole and coolant residue near the front. What we'll do with that info is search for our leaks and make sure to fix them before catastrophe strikes. So the first thing I've had to do is I've had to remove my Brown Davis bash plate from underneath the car. Now the funny thing is, is um, uh, they cut a hole for the sump plug, but they don't make room for the oil filter removal. So you have to remove the whole bash plate when doing an oil change anyway. So this, silly. Um, also, I've just realized I must have some sort of leak somewhere. So I'm going to be doing an inspection to find out whether or not I can figure out where that is. So I'm just underneath the Prado now at the moment. And by the look of it, two things. One this hose clamp wasn't done up tight enough and there's two so when i have the time and the space i'm gonna have to remove both of these and replace it with one good new one along with probably replacing this hose because it looks a bit you know spent is the word i'm gonna use for it um but the big issue that i found here is if i look right up in oh hang on let's see if i can get the camera in there look up in here you can actually see the gasket for the sump is weeping so i don't need to place it at some point and if i look at it the actual sump bolt plug. Now that could just be run off from the sump gasket, uh, but the sump bolt appears to have had a bit of a leak as well. So we'll see if we can, after we've drained that. Now I've noticed it's had a bit of a bang here, so maybe when I do the sump gasket, I might just replace the whole sump in one go, but that looks to be, it looks like it could be remove the whole steering remove the whole diff and the everything out from under it to be able to get it out but um, that could be a major task for uh, someone that's got a bit more space and room than me all right so now I've just done draining the oil from the sump itself here and I've got the uh, uh, sump there obviously the sun's dinted, sump's dinted got that there um, next task is to undo the oil filter which is up there the oil filter to use in this vehicle is a Z418 um, the one I've got there is a replacement version. It's a Pro Select. Pro Select what? It's a Pro Select uh, PSO58A. But yeah, Z418 from Ryko would be the one to get. Um, you can get them from Super Cheap Auto. Uh, probably shit. Probably Bunnings. No. No. But yeah. Um, the uh, yeah. Next part is to do that. Now it's in a bit of a pain in the ass position. Not because of like angle of reach. Like I can probably get one of. Where's my tool? We get one of these tools around pretty easily to get it undone. Problem is, is it's um where the oil is going to piss out of it, um, if any does, will be all over the side of the engine block, all so over the side of the engine there, and then it'll just spill down willy nilly everywhere here. Hence the big area cardboard. That way I don't have to worry about it. That way I don't have to worry about it getting on my, you know, on my driveway. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm going to uh. I'm gonna get that off of there and then see how how that comes off and then we're gonna lube up the uh, we're gonna oil up the seal on the new one and then throw that on and then go from there. So I got the new the old oil filter out and uh, yeah it's obviously I didn't get too much mess luckily I only had a little bit of a drop over there on the car on the cardboard just here. Um, decent amount of spillage happened on the on like the, the diff uh, mount. Um, but all in all, it's not super, super bad. I don't know if you can see up in there. It's not too bad up in there. That's good. Not a big mess I have to clean up. Um, now just to whack the sump, uh, the sump plug back in, uh, whack the new oil filter on, and then uh, refill it and go from there. So 
two things that I've done with my oil filter, my new oil filter. So this is obviously a Ryko Z418 oil filter. Um, I wrote how many Ks it had on it. Uh, so 250,000 Ks the car's got on it now. So it's, uh, you know, pretty done a piece in it. No spring chicken. Um, I also wrote the date that I'm changing it as well too. So today's date is the 9th of the, sorry, the, uh, it's September 11, uh, 2022. So I thought, I thought, you know, I'd write that down on that. So that's cool. Um, but pro tip though, other than that is one, make sure you actually peel this plastic off. And then once you've gotten rid of that, two, see how it's got a seal on the actual thing. One, check to make sure your old has a uh, seal on it too. Uh, make sure the seal's not sitting up on the engine block because you don't want, you do not want two seals. If you've got two seals on there, it'll split between the seal and then you'll leak oil and you have a bad time. My pro tip though is you're meant to oil these, right? And what people do is they stick their finger in the old oil and they do that. Haha, magic trick. Watch this. Ready? Bang. Just dip that onto that, low mess, decent bit of oils onto it, looks like it'll whack onto there, plus there's a little bit of oil left over on the actual mount, so that'll mean that's preloaded, ready to go. Now, the way this works is, is most people say you're supposed to fill these with oil before you whack them onto the car, but, you know, a bit hard to fill an oil filter when it sits on the block like this. So I'm just going to whack this on as it is and then just fill it up and then add however much I need to add. Last thing about fitting oil filters. Obviously, you've done your, uh, you've pre-oiled your seal. You made sure you got not an extra seal in there. With these ones, hand tight only. Do not use a tool. Um, if you use a tool, they end up cooking on. So you just do it up until you feel like it's good enough. I can't really do any more with what I can do with my hand just there. Um, yeah, and then you can even see what style you need underneath the bottom of it if you need to do that. But yeah, if you've got enough on there, you know you can. Uh, Whack that on there, make sure it's nice and one more. Yep, that's it. That's all I can get out of it with my hand. So yeah, that's perfect. You don't need a thing there. It'll cook on with heat. So yeah, that'll be, uh, that's that's a perfect amount. Now we whack our sump plug back in and then we go immediately fill the oil as to not forget that we haven't put any in. Okay, so now that we've whacked our sump plug back in and put our oil filter back on, um, we've got a bottle of six liters of 10 weight 40 uh, fully synthetic from Penrite. Uh, theoretically, the uh, car's meant to take 5.2 liters to fill. Um, but I think that's measured without, that's measured with filling an oil filter. Um, so it's probably gonna end up being about 5.6, 5.7 liters. Um, so I've got a six liter total here to make sure I've got plenty enough to be able to fill the whole thing. You definitely don't want to be eyeing too little of an oil uh, because you don't want to drive around with not enough oil in it for sure, 100%. Um, so yeah, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to fill the oil up with that one there. Um, I'm going to whack in five litres and then I'm going to see how much I have I need to put in after that. So after putting in uh, five litres, uh, it went to the full line and I've just put, I just turned it over and then ran it. And it had gone back down to the empty line, but now if I can get the camera to focus, I put an extra litre in, so bringing it to six litres I put in total. It's actually now on the line pretty well perfect. Um, so now I guess uh, what will happen is, is as time goes on, uh, I'll check again probably tomorrow uh, after I've taken this to the, like go dinner and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'll uh, see where the oil level's at. Um, I'll get another extra liter of the same Penrite 1040, and then if I uh, need to, I'll put more in. But I think six liters is about the exact amount you need to put into this. So, all right, wonderful. I'll whack the oil cap back on now, and then uh, we'll get to changing the air filter. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this old dirty oil. So first we're going to dispose of that uh, Ryko, the old uh, the old oil filter. Um, we'll use the Ryko box that we got for our new one to dispose of that. And then we'll use this, uh, we'll put this old oil back into the bottle that uh, the new oil came out of, since it's now empty, so that'll be a good way to store that. Then I'll take it to a proper disposal site to be able to be disposed of correctly, as this cannot be recycled and you can't just chuck it in your regular bin. Um, big EPA fines if they get caught doing that, so. Um, yeah, we'll dispose of this correctly first. We'll set that up for disposal and then we'll get started on our air filter. All right, so just use that funnel and that bucket there to empty that out in there now. And what I've done is I've parked it over here, uh, sealed in that, that old container, just so that I can get rid of it out of a, uh, just so I can get rid of it at a later date, probably later on. Um, but now, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the air filter here, um, which is super, super simple. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. 
Uh, and then we're going to be refitting our Brown Davis bash plate, but I'll probably give that underside a bit of a clean first with the hose, um, just to just to get all the dirt and the muck and the grime off of it. So that way, if there is any other leaks, I'm going to pull that off. I can see them straight away. So yeah. Okay, so to remove the air filter in Toyota Prado a nine. Uh, 5 ZFE motor. Um, all it takes is literally just clip there, clip there, real easy, and just around the back here, clip there. Yeah. Then what you do is, is um, if you need to, you can loosen off your math sensor so you can get this up, but realistically, all you need to do is just pick this whole thing out, um, and then hopefully you should just be able to get access to your air filter like that. Um, but yeah, I'll need two hands, so I'm going to grab that out and then replace that in, and then go from there. Okay, so this is the old air filter, and by the look of it, it's actually really not that bad. Like, I mean, I've seen much, much worse come out of all the four-wheel drives. I'm assuming that that's probably where all the air comes directly in, because that's the darkest spot on the air on the actual air filter. Um, this is our new one here, which is an Ryko A1397. Obviously, it's got no dark marks on it anywhere. It's uh, brand new out of the box just there. What we're going to do is we're going to whack our old one back into that box there and I'm gonna whack out a brand new one in because we have it anyway um, if you're in a real pinch and you don't have one of these that in that condition probably could have still been okay for another maybe 5,000 K's but then get one when you can get a hold one just put one on order and then replace it when you get it because it's super easy to replace these another thing to remember as well team is these are orientated so like they have a direction that they need to go it's actually uh, the up down way so you need to have this open hole at the top that way the breather hose can actually have somewhere to breathe from as see this end is sealed so um, breathe a hole at the top and then just whack it straight in and then just press it down and then we'll just clip that shut so yeah I've just uh, whacked it in there now as you can see it's sort of good it's obviously got that circle hole so that clips up into the top under the side of that um, yeah, and then you just literally just, as I had it, just make sure your clips aren't in the way. Push that down. Hit it with your hand. Boom, that's shut. Then, bam, clip. Clip. And clip. Boom, and that's your air filter. Your air filter's now replaced. That's really, really easy. So, yeah, um, again, uh... That one probably could have been okay for a hot minute, but uh, I had a brand new one, so I may as well while I'm at it at the same time. That way I know when it was last done. I'm under the car here. I thought I'd show you just where the Brown Davis bash plate actually mounts to. Mounts to this hole here at the front. It has six, has six holes it needs to mount to in total. Um, one, one over here, uh, just there. One just there. So that's the two at the front that the factory bash plate mount to, along with this one here in the center. But the Brown Davis uh, bash plate doesn't use that center one there, only uses these outer two. Then over here, if we look up to, I think it's here, I think it's these holes here. Um, that hole there and that hole just there, I'm pretty confident of the other two that it mount to there as well. And then at the very back, we've got that hole just there and that respective one on the other side over there. So those are the uh, those are the four holes that the Brown Davis bash plate actually mounts to while I'm under the car. Um, so yeah, now while I'm under here, before I do anything else, I'm just going to give all this a bit of a clean with a rag if I can, a bit of degreaser, um, and then I'm going to go refit the uh, Brown Davis bash plate. All right, so as you can see now, I've just successfully refit my bash plate. So that's all been sorted up there. Had its uh, one, two at the front there. Had the Two holes, one in that hole there, one in that hole there, and then the one, two at the very back you can see. So deep, like long, long socket extension for that one there, same with that. Uh, these ones here are obviously medium socket extension to get past this bar here for both of these, and then just standard ratchet for those there. They're all a 13 millimeter. Um, mine has a 14 millimeter here because the back side of this thread has snapped out so we drilled it out and then put a bolt and a nut together there that worked out pretty fine um, but yeah there should be 13 millimeter ones there and then that's how you fit your bash plate it's super easy to do so um it does weigh a bit so if you're like me and you struggle just sort of use what you can to get it under there but uh yeah no i think uh that's good for that so that's that uh, done thanks again for watching today team um we replaced the air filter, we replaced the oil filter and the oil with all fresh new 10 weight 40 from Penrite. 
Um, and we also checked the car for any sort of leaks and stuff like that. And we found that the bottom radiator hose had a small leak because it wasn't done up tight enough. And um, we also found that the sump plug also wasn't done up tight enough, so it had a very small leak as well. Um, the sump gasket appears to be weeping. It's not a massive issue, but I'd like to have it fixed uh, eventually. Um, and uh, yeah, now what we'll do is, is um, we'll check in in another maybe 100 Ks. You know, maybe by next time I put fuel in it, I'll check all this stuff again to see if there's been any leaks. Uh, I'll see if there's any missing coolant or oil. Um, and then once we've done that, uh, we'll top up what we need to and then see if it continues to leak and then go from there. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in again um, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Along with changing the oil, oil filter and air filter, I inspected the brake fluid, trans fluid and washer bottles to make sure all of those were in spec. I only had a major service 20,000 k's ago, so all those were pretty fresh. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to this long-winded video, and I'll catch you next time.